Now, I know I said this about the last episode with Paul Kyle, but this episode is also very, very special to me. And the reason why is because we're we're talking to Amanda Rankin today. And Amanda Rankin, she has been someone that you've probably, if you've listened to my other episodes, especially with like Dr. Brian Simmons, you've heard me mention her before because she has been my friend for over a decade now. I met her in Panama. We were, I was actually in a, there was this little restaurant, like family owned restaurant that I, that I used to go to whenever I was in Panama. They had these really awesome calzones. They were that that restaurant shut down because they were making no money because they were giving these gigantic portions and probably had no profit margin, but they made these amazing calzones. And so one day my wife sent me there. and I am a big, because of the places that I work, the places that I minister in a lot of persecuted places, a lot of places where the church is under persecution and a lot of Christian refugees and a lot of really rough environments. I love the voice of the martyrs ministry. And I was wearing a shirt that some of you have may, may have seen that, uh, it's, it's been 10, 10 plus years. So I can't remember exactly what the shirt says, but it has lions and the Colosseum and it says Christians still die. And it talks about how every day on average, and this is a true statistic, 300 Christians are martyred for their faith every single day. And I was wearing that shirt in line at this restaurant. And I hear this voice behind me that says, that's a nice shirt. And I turn around and there's Amanda Rankin. And she had just moved with her husband, Tony, from the United States to Panama. They had sold everything. And she had brought, and she didn't, I'm talking about this now because she didn't talk about this in, in the interview. She brought like a shipping container full of books. I mean, hundreds of teaching books from people like Leonard Ravenhill and, and uh, well, now I'm blanking on them, but Chuck Pierce and uh, uh, Patricia King and all of these different people that Derek Prince and, and I, I, people that I had wanted to read. And as a missionary, I couldn't afford any of these books. Back then, I was living on like $200 a month and couldn't even afford one of these books. And it was a huge sacrifice for me. And whenever Amanda came, she brought this container and her ministry that she was starting was she was bringing all of these books to start a library largely aimed at missionaries in the area who could come and and uh, borrow these books and read them. And so immediately we had a connection. Immediately we, we became fast friends. I was over at her house the next day and I would spend hours and hours over there with her borrowing books. Just I, I was reading so many books of hers and she was such a blessing and we became really, really good friends. And uh, I don't want to go into our whole story because she share, share some of the story there. But man, she is, she is so awesome and her walk with the Lord is awesome. And uh, she now has a ministry. Well, she has so many ministries. I can't really go into one. But she recently wrote a book about widowhood because her husband, Tony, who was an awesome man, he passed away four, four and a half years ago. And she's been a widow and she has been just... Uh, she wrote a book about it, about finding purpose, finding destiny and widowhood. And so I, I want to say, if you are, if you're a widow watching this, you need to buy this book. You need to read it because not, not it, it's really going to impact you and really going to bless you. And we talk a lot about that during the, the latter part of the inter- interview, but it, she, she has such an amazing testimony and such an awesome story and all of the things that she's doing for the Lord. And so she's a really good friend of mine. So uh, this is really special for me. It was an honor to be able to interview her. And I know that you guys are going to be blessed as well. Also, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. Please click, click the bell that's on the side. Or if you already have subscribed and haven't clicked the bell, please make sure you do. Because I had someone come to me and uh, they were asking why they had subscribed, but they didn't know that there were new episodes out. And the reason why is because if you don't don't click the bell, then you don't get the notifications. That That's a notification bell. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, uh, the audio version, I just want to ask you if you can click on the five stars if you haven't already or whatever rating system you have and whatever platform you listen on and uh, give a review. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go into the details uh, here in the, the show notes and the description, as they call it, I always call it show notes, but the, the description of the podcast or the YouTube channel, whatever you're watching or listening on, and you can find ways to donate there. And we're working on a website, which we're really excited about. And lastly, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say that the, uh, 
I think that's about it. Oh, uh, we're, oh, by the way, so normally we would be doing a bio episode and I've been talking about doing, I know the last time I did like a bio episode before Barry Miracle came on and share about his awesome grandfather, I had done a bio episode and I had said in that episode that I was going to do an episode on John G. Lake. And normally I would be doing a bio episode uh, about now, but here's the thing. I am saving the bio episode for Thanksgiving because I want to do a Thanksgiving special and I want to just tell kind of the story of Thanksgiving, the side of Thanksgiving that maybe it isn't just as clean and simple as the the pilgrims floating over and whatever happened and that whole story that you learn in school. There's, there's a lot to it in terms of the church and the pioneers and their walk with God. And so I want to do a Thanksgiving special, which is why we're not doing a bio episode the week before Thanksgiving. We are going to do a bio episode on Thanksgiving and I'm going to release it Thanksgiving day so that those of you who are cooking like myself, I'm always the one who ends up doing the turkey on Thanksgiving and uh, cooking, cooking. A, well, I mostly focus on the turkey. Other, I let other people do the desserts, but I'm going to be doing a, that episode on that day, releasing it that day so that while you're cooking and preparing, you can listen or put it on YouTube and watch and all that kind of stuff. So that's what's going on with the bio episode, just so you're aware. Please continue to share this with people. Please continue to tell people about the podcast as it grows. It encourages me. And as you can see, if you have been with me from the beginning, we are quite a bit in this podcast now. We've been doing it for months since June. We've been doing this podcast. And I'm sure all of you who have been with me from the beginning have seen the dramatic improvement in quality over time. And it's because I'm learning how to get better. And because of some of you who have given financial support, I've been able to upgrade equipment and uh, be able to learn more. There's still things I want to upgrade. I still want to upgrade the editing software that I use. I use just a free software and it's very limited what it can do. I also want to upgrade just the platform that I use. I use a free podcast platform to put these podcasts up. I'd love to be able to upgrade the platform so that I have it's just smoother and just all these different things. We want to be able to keep doing this and bringing on new guests and uh, it's just, there's a lot to it. And so with those of you who give financially, who have given financially, you are the reason that the quality of the show has continued to rise and it will continue to rise. And God has been so good and I thank you and just pray that God would bless all of you guys who've been blessing this show, whether it's financially or sharing or just telling people about it. I really appreciate it. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get into Amanda Rankin's episode and this interview. I'm so excited. I know you're the, uh, that you're going to be so blessed and she's going to pray with you at the end and bless you. And it's just going to be, it's going to be fun and wild ride. So here comes Amanda Rankin. <music> you are hey i see you well i don't i just see the name oh there you are there's the top of your head oh no oh, here we go here <laughs> i am there. how you doing i'm doing great let me turn you up you sound like you sound like you're in the states talk uh, uh, can you hear me uh, hello hello yeah yeah no 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 <clears throat> i had to turn my speaker on oh uh, gotcha well you're looking good you just you just look like you. I know. I just, I always look like me. And then, and then I'll lose weight for a while. And then yeah. I just go back to looking like me. Oh. <laughs> every every, every yes. single time. Funny how that works. Let yeah. Get you bigger. There you are. Okay. Now gonna, that's better. I'm trying to readjust. I have a, a, a secondary camera here I started using because this camera on the computer never looks very good. So I got like a, a, a different one that I use to make myself look fancier. Whenever I, uh -huh. I I do the editing, I stuff. am I looking fancier? Am I you looking look, younger? You look way you younger. Look like I've had a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> you well, you also kind of always look the same. You know, see, I need a computer that's higher. Doesn't that look better? Yeah. Well, it's hard to. It's down there. I yeah, I have. See, my stuff is all on a piano right now, and so like. Oh. Yeah, it. I I need to have a desk where I can put the camera behind it because what I have is and nobody nobody else can see this, but what I have is the computer is sitting on a binder because the screen turns. It's so old the computer screen will turn off if I actually put the screen back. So I have to angle the whole thing, and then I have the microphone box right behind the computer with a coffee cup propping my phone up, and that's my other camera. Oh, that that is perfect. <laughs> 
That sounds like my stuff. Yeah. I'm just thinking, yeah. wonder what I have to make it taller. Wait a minute, let me see if I can figure out. Well, Does you have a... you... What? Wait, where are you right you know, now? I'm... I'm in my office. I'm in, to it used to be Tony's office. Okay, because I look, for a minute it looked like the library office, but. That's looking out the back. And, just... and then uh, that's the door into the sort of the living room. Yes. Okay. Are you lost? No, no, I got it now. You want me to go outside in the tropics with all the plants? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Wait, a lot of our listeners, I mean, this is like, I have the YouTube channel where some people watch, but I also have a lot of people who just listen. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be kind of disappointing So they won't for them. see my flowers? They won't, they won't be able to see your flowers or anything. Okay. I know you have a beautiful garden that they can, our listeners can imagine, imagine those. Okay. okay. We just hit a thousand, we just hit a thousand downloads. Wow. Yeah, That's like awesome. yesterday. Hey, can I show my book? Absolutely. Except, I was, it's, yeah. except it's backwards. Not on mine, it's not. I see it just fine. Oh, good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about your book for sure. Okay. I'll put right. I'll put the Amazon links and everything in the description for people who wanna who wanna buy. Awesome. It. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, another, yeah. The great another. thing, the great thing about this podcast, your road. I know that's the book you use to teach our our missionaries as well. Your road to success. Yeah. Okay, we'll put that one up too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll oh, make sure we'll make sure we talk about them. But yeah, yeah. that's uh, um, one of the great things about doing these podcasts is like, I don't have a huge audience, but the audience that I have, they're like really, they're really part of it. I get, I get more feedback from this podcast than anything else I do. It's, it's amazing. Well, I always keep losing the links. I'd, I'd like to figure out how to follow you. So they just automatically appear and, and I have you in front of me and then I'll watch you, but I, out of sight, out of mind. The only time have... I ever... Do you have a YouTube? Uh, you, do you have YouTube? Yeah. Well, just go. go computer, yeah. Well, I mean, if you just yeah. go on, if you just go on my YouTube channel and you click subscribe, and then there's a little bell right next to that, you click on that bell, ah, and then it will email yeah. you every time a new episode comes out. Okay, so what are your call? Your call revival. Revival Carriers Podcast. Revival Carriers. How do you spell carrier? Carriers broadcast. Okay. All right. Yeah. Or you can just go on my Facebook page and like every other post is an episode or something about the podcast. Oh, that's fun. Right now and I'm trying to, right now I'm trying to get to a hundred subscribers because then I get a, a, what's it called? A unique URL, like an address. Oh, oh. Uh-huh. I'll do that. Okay. What's it, what's your, um, <laughs> Which Alan Crookham are you on Facebook? Just the I'm old school Alan Crookham, A L A N. Okay, with or, a, and Crookham with a C. Yes, for our listeners okay. who have no who don't know what Amanda's talking about, a few years ago I changed my are name we, on Facebook. What? Are we? Ta are, we're, you're not recording this yet, are you? Oh, I'm recording. Yeah. No, I had no idea. I thought we were just saying hi. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I, I purposefully don't tell people when the interview has started because I learned I learned a long yeah. time ago that people have like their interview persona uh -huh. and their uh -huh. like not interview persona. And I prefer the uh -huh. not interview persona. Okay. And so I don't tell people when it started because the best part of the interview is before they realize it starts. You're a sneak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, for the listeners out there, my name, yeah. I, I changed the spelling a couple, a few years ago because I was going to a lot of like, uh, a lot of countries that have a lot of security issues and I didn't want them to associate me as a missionary with some of the countries that I was going to. And so I recently changed it back. Oh, but anyway, okay. now, now that the gig, the jig is up and you know that we're starting. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we should talk about missionary work. <laughs> so okay so first of all amanda we always start with the person's testimony their story so can you just share with our listeners your story and then we'll go from there sure i guess my story would start with why am, have i been living in panama as a missionary for the last 12 and a half years and um yeah we were my husband and i we were living in the states we were living in florida and we suddenly felt like God was calling us to Panama and we had no idea, I'd never been on a missions trip in my life. 
and we came down for a two week just look around and we felt like the lord was saying you know we kind of went you know we did our finger in the air and kind of went is this where god is saying to come in volcan and we felt like it was we went back and um and then we put our house up for sale and this is an interesting little side story in the middle of it we had not we were living in a retirement village at the time and we had nine houses up for sale and Tony said, you know, I don't know how this house is ever going to sell because it was just when the market was beginning to tip. And I went to a prophetic weekend where they teach you how to hear from God and, you know, speak into other people's lives. And just before I left, Tony said, maybe we should rent the house and then go down there. And so the very first time that we got into a small group, the head, the head leader of our group, he turned around. He knew nothing about this, but he did know me, but we hadn't seen each other in a couple of years. He said, Amanda, the Lord said he wants to make it happen. He doesn't want you to make it happen. And I immediately knew what he meant. He wants to sell the house. Don't get in and try to manipulate it. So I came home and I said that to Tony. And we said, okay, that's a rotten idea. And we repented and said, sorry, we were trying to grab the reins. And the house sold in 30 days. So we came down here knowing no one or anything. We sold our house, we sold our cars, and we ended up living two blocks away from the only bilingual church in Volcan. And this is a little mountain town of 15,000 people with a gazillion churches, but of course they all speak Spanish. And we didn't speak Spanish when we came here. And um, it turned out that Roger, the pastor, who you ought to interview someday, he- oh, I'd love to. Start yeah, he would love to. He's hard he's, to get a hold of, though. I, it's, I would love to interview him, but he's hard to get a hold of. Yeah, well, I'll talk to him. Yeah. Um, and I just had a missionary this morning who was a single female, Ruth she, Santo. She was single female living in Jordan for two, four years, I think. Boy, talk about a hard time. She's a good one to interview. But anyway. Hey, well, so, do, you have, do you have her contact info? I would love to interview her. Yeah, she lives right here. I almost brought her in. I'm going to say, hey, we got two here to interview. But anyway, yeah, there are a lot of very interesting people here I'll hook you up with. But so where was I? Anyway, we moved here. We hooked in with the church. The pastor had been a missionary since he was 18 years old and went around the world a gazillion times in nine years on the Logo ships and um, then started a mission school. And I started teaching. Um, kind of how to get your act together. I use this book. I know you said you remember it. Remember this book? Yes. Tell people about your book. Okay. So this is a book that the Lord gave me years ago in the United States. And um, it teaches you how to set goals, how to have, you know, how to have a vision and then how to have a partner, an accountability partner to walk with you to fulfill your goals. Well, I use this to teach you, I think. Were you in one of my classes? I mean, oh, I know yeah. I, I've been in a couple of your classes in Costa Rica and in Panama. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but you invited me to those. I mean, were you ever a student first? Oh no, I was never a student of your class. Okay. Well, anyway, so I would I taught in the Operation Mobilization schools and the White Land schools, and and um, yeah, so I've just been here, just living living a wonderful life among people that. I'm finally beginning to understand after 12 years. Yeah, so the name of your book for the listeners who can't see it is Your Road to Success, correct? What's the, I can't remember what the subtitle is. Your Road to Success, Living a Balanced Life in an Unbalanced World by Amanda Rankin. And again, listeners and viewers, I will put the link to buy this in the description. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So right now, have you been hearing about the landslides? Yes, there is major flooding. There, are, they said that there are sixty dead there in Volcan alone. Wow, that sixty must be in Setapunda. Yeah, it's like the 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 middle part between. Uh, again, Bandito. for uh, again for people who don't know this part of Panama, the where Amanda lives and where I lived for many years is, uh, it's a, a mountain town right under a volcano. And there's another town higher up that's even smaller called Serra Punta. And even though it's up high in the mountains, it's kind of like a floodgate for, for every, every few years, there's big flooding. And this, there's flooding going on right now, which is the worst I've seen in the time that I've lived there. I mean, whole roads washed out. 
uh, I, they're, they're estimating something like 600 people cut off from, from everybody. It's, it's really bad. Well, it's been going on a week. And this morning, I've never heard so many helicopters go overhead. I mean, they are still going up there and, and finding people. And these are the the U.S. the U.S. chopper that the U.S. sent down, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah the United States sent their army teams in to help, which has been wonderful. If you go on my Facebook page, I have a bunch of videos there. But yeah, it's when we moved here. We moved here in 2008 in April, and we had the same thing happen in November. It broke open the river, and every we they had a thousand people, a thousand refugees. Right now, they've opened up all the schools, and so they are sending the refugees to the different schools because in the middle of all this is COVID-19. So they're, all, they're having to deal, you know, deal with that, but um, I just heard from our church that there was a group of 10 that came down from the hot springs that had walked for two days with their children with nothing to eat, freezing cold, in the rain and the mud just to get help. It's really been hard we need prayers we need prayers that they find everybody and and donations yeah there are a lot of i know my my mother-in-law who's there well and my parents as well but my, my mother-in-law there in town they are cooking meals to take out to people mm-hmm. because there's so many people who've come in from the mountains who have nothing and they're mm-hmm. just uh what I, what i love about panama is the way that people will come together and to, to just cook and bring meals and help Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been good. It's so been it, good. has it stopped raining there? Is it, is it cleared up? Well, yes and no. It stopped raining, but it's still raining every day. But it's not that deluge that brings the mountains down. So it, it so, didn't affect you where you are, though, right? It just, uh, no. I mean, like a mile up from you, but not where you are specifically. It starts at Bambito, you know, the where the... T- Toyota, yeah, the, the owner of the Toyota, you know, it starts at Bambito and goes all the way up to Santa Punta and it's broken the road out several places. And as you know, there's only one road, so they can't get out. I mean, there are huge gaps in the road. It just washes the road down the river. And then Tizengal, a bunch of people, kids have been uh, buried in Tizengal, which is just up the road to Rio Serrano. And the other place is, is um, Gualaca, where they have the um, hydroelectric. That was really badly torn up too. Hmm. So, so help has had to spread out to reach everybody. Yeah, it's always so bad. I, I remember this happened a few years ago and I, I went up there and because I was a foreigner, they weren't going to let me in. But I was, thankfully, I had my, my little pastoral credentials card in my pocket. And even though it was English mm-hmm. and everything, I showed it to them and they let mm-hmm. me go through into mm-hmm. that disaster zone. It was just me and one other guy. And I mean, the, the president of Panama was there, military was everywhere, just trying to rescue people. And it was, it's so, so bad. And it's sad because my wife and I, and my wife is Panamanian. We were, we were talking about this and insurance is, there's no insurance. Like insurance is not going to build new houses for these people. Like when you lose your house in Panama, it's gone. Like you have lost mm-hmm. everything. And so the people who are homeless because of this, there are no homeless shelters. There's no stadiums for them to go to. It's just people have to take them in and they literally have to start over again. So it's really, really bad. Really hard. And it has wiped out the farms in Cerro Punta. So that's the food basket. That is where they grow all the vegetables for Panama. Yeah. And there are no more farms. Yeah, it's going to be. I don't know if you've been up to Cerro Punta lately, and I don't know about your readers. I'll just kind of take a picture here. Um, it's a big bowl. It's a great big bowl and it has great big high mountain sides all the way around it. And it was jungle. When we moved here 12 years ago, it was jungle, mostly jungle, maybe 10, 15, 20, max 20% was in f- crops and farms. Since I've lived here, they have cut down all the jungles and all of that land around there has been turned into into row crops. Well, they're very steep and they're full of mud. And so I'm imagining, I haven't seen a picture of Seta Punta, you know, from the aerial view, but I can imagine what's happened because it's so totally devastated, everything in Seta Punta, that those mountainsides just came down. There's nothing to hold them up. So it just, 
I don't know if you've seen pictures of the main street, but oh my goodness. It's yeah, my, my wife, of course, she she knows everybody in that area. She grew up there sure. and well, she, she had get all the videos. Yeah. yeah, she got videos and friends who are out in that area. We have a lot of friends who are in Sarah Punta. Thankfully, everyone that we know so far has has been okay. There's a couple mm -hmm. of pastors we're not sure about. We haven't heard from. We're hoping they're okay as well. We're praying for them, but yeah, and also yeah. the the road to Bocas del Toro, which is another province. There's only that completely got washed out as well, and so there are a lot of people cut off in Bocas del Toro too. It's it's just the whole that whole northern northeastern part of the country has just just been blasted by this. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it actually hit Nicaragua. <laughs> It's yeah. like, we didn't even get the hurricane. We got the tail of it. I hate to think what would happen if it came out. But have you heard anything about Nicaragua? Do you have I, any missionaries there? Yeah, we have our missionary, Again? Cynthia, there. And we mm -hmm. actually haven't heard anything from her. I mean, she talks to us all the time. We haven't heard anything about any kind of destruction or anything. I'll, I'll, I should double check with her. I, I know my wife was just talking to her and everything seemed to be fine there. But it's odd. It is odd that the hurricane hit Nicaragua, but most of the damage seems to be there. I know Costa Rica got hit a little bit too, but they didn't have near the damage that they've yeah. had in Panama. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so um, just kind of change the subject a little bit. I'm so curious to hear your opinion uh, and this is going to air in about a week and a half. And mm -hmm. so things might have changed by the time this actually airs. But uh, right now I'm curious because with this, this whole election, and I don't, uh, people who listen and watch, they know I don't talk politics. On, so I'm not, I'm not here to talk. I don't want to talk about parties or, or policies mm -hmm. or anything like that. What I, but what I am curious because of the impact this is having on the church right now, because mm -hmm. at the time that we're recording this, Joe Biden has been declared president. Mm -hmm. And there, there before on election night, there were so many big name prophets who were prophesying Donald Trump will win the presidency. And, uh, and you're, you're close with P Patricia King and some, and I, I don't think she prophesied, I don't remember her prophesying that at all, but uh, I, you're close with a lot of these bigger, like uh, more prominent people in the, in the prophetic movement. And so mm -hmm. my concern with all of this is how it is affecting the church now that Joe Biden has been declared president, because there is the whole, all of these people questioning, well, what about the prophets then? What, what does that mean if they prophesied incorrectly? And I'm just curious, because I imagine you are so in this prophetic movement, what your thoughts are, or if you've heard anything, or just what kind of what you feel is, is going on. Well, from what I hear from them is that the, um, it's not over yet. And one person had a they were asking the Lord about it, and he reminded them of, of Absalom and David. And you remember Absalom, everybody thought he won, and he, he was actually in the castle and, you know, raping David's concubines. And then they came in and kicked him out because he was there illegally, and David got in. And mm -hmm. I have not heard of one single prophet who has come off that word. And they have all said, God is speaking. I know Dutch Sheets, you know, he's saying, don't stop praying. Don't just say it's over because there is huge fraud involved. And you, you hear so many things coming in. You don't really know what's true or what's not. You know, like there were 34,000 people, you know, for, for Trump and 11 or something in, in Arizona. But um I think we just have to wait and continue to believe God because so many words have come about about the third great awakening and the harvest and revival coming from ev every single prophet that I know that, that is accurate and walks with God is not coming off the word. And although there's some of them like Patricia and Chuck, neither of them said Trump is going to win. You know, th those are the only two that just kept saying, pray, 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 because this is so important. But yeah. our prayers are probably never been more important. And, you know, you are in America, so you're seeing the news, you're seeing the media, you're seeing what's going on. I'm not. I am praying and listening to the prophets because I don't have television, um, <laughs> which is quite a blessing. Um, 
I would say, you know, turn off the TV and just seek God and keep praying and praying and praying and then pray some more because yeah. You know, it's not about the man. It's not about one or the other, but it is about God and what he wants. And God, God does not want abortion. You know, God does not want same-sex marriage. I mean, that's just biblical. That isn't, that's right. you know, that's right. so that's sort of where I am. I would say, don't get off the wall and keep praying. It's not over till it's over. Yeah, I, I agree too. There's so many biblical just like you talked about with Absalom and there, there are several other instances as well where someone was declared King and it turned out to be the other way. And so I, I'm, for me, I'm kind of like you in the sense that I, I don't pay a lot of attention to the politics. I mm-hmm. just pay attention. I, I tend to pay more attention to how the church is being affected by it. And so mm-hmm. that, that has been one thing I've noticed with uh, some of the, the bigger, like, like Chris Vallotton, who is really, really respected. And, and I respect the guy a, a ton. And he just put out that apology video, apologizing for his prophecy that Trump would win. And then he apologized. But then even just this morning, I was sent another, I guess, um, not an, almost an apology for the apology, uh, saying, mm-hmm. saying that he, he removed the video of himself apologizing and said that so many prophets are still prophesying that Trump will win that he decided to take it down in case the, the word that he gave actually turns out to be true. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the thing that concerns me because in my opinion, and I know some people are not going to like this, but in my opinion, God is in control no matter who is president. And I know a lot of people are, are feel like if Trump doesn't win, it's the end of the world. Like our, our nation may as well just fall into the abyss. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I still stand on Jesus is still King. And if Biden ends up being the president that does not change Jesus and Mm -hmm. he is still the King. And so I, I, I see so many people who are struggling so much with this and some people who are genuinely doubting their faith and doubting the word of God because prophets prophesied things that that didn't come true. And so I, I watched Chuck Pierce's word as well and he, he was prophesying, and we're still ways off from this, that on January 18th, he said that the Lord, Lord spoke to him about something would happen to the Democratic, which would be Biden, something would happen to Biden. He didn't go so far as to say someone would win or not win. He just said that something's mm-hmm. going to happen on the 18th. So, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I was, then, go ahead. There's several prophecies about, about, January 18th or January 17th. I kind of caught that, but I can't remember. Anyway, you know, we just have to wait and see, but I don't think we can come. I still say we have to stay on the wall and be intercessors and pray because God, I mean, you. I don't believe that God wants a government that kills babies. I mean, if you just want to take one small thing, God isn't for that. He, he's given us authority. He's given us dominion. We have gotten off the wall. I mean, back in the 50s, when they took prayer out of school and all of these laws that changed, the church was sound asleep. We never did anything. But he calls us to be the, his word on the earth. He calls us to be his authority in the, in the earth. And so if we're just going to stand back and do nothing, Evil is going to prevail, but we are called to stand up and be the truth and, and stand on his word and declare his word and expect his word. And, and I mean, we are to rule and reign on the earth and we've done a terrible job of it. So, so do you, I do you I think, mean, I, do you think right now that prayer, uh, I, I'm just curious about this because this is another point of contention in the church, right? Because a lot of people say, well, the prophets prophesied something, so it has to pass, or they're false no. prophets. Do you believe that it could be contingent on the prayers of the church? I do. I think that prophecy tells us, now, I don't know. I mean, you know, the big prophet who has an absolute word from God, that's one thing. But I think that when we receive prophecy, we aren't, we're supposed to act on it. And so if, if we believe that Trump is, is going to win, because that's what the prophets are saying, I, then we are responsible to, to pray in that word, to declare that word, to create a thing, and it should be established. 
Um, but I think that if we don't do anything and we just, you know, just sort of ignore the prophets and go, okay, God's going to take care of it. I don't, I don't think God works that way. Hmm. I mean, he's created us to be co-laborers with him. He isn't just Santa Claus in the sky and, you know, he says the word, and somebody says it and suddenly it all falls into place. We're in war. We have to war for it. But yeah. it's what his will is. I think it's what his will is. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, this is this has just been my question in a lot of, because I'm I, I've never considered myself to be a prophet. I move in prophecy every now, and then, but that's not the office that God has me in for sure. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I, I don't claim to understand all the ins and outs of prophecy, but I I know that that's just that's been something that's been asked to me just as a missionary. Mm-hmm. People they ask questions, sure. right? And sure. so that has been one of the things is. So do we just say all of the prophets are false prophets then if, if it goes through, if nothing changes, then were they all false prophets or because some of the prophets, I I don't want to, I'm not going to name names on here, but there are some prophets who are coming right back and they're quoting verses like uh, thou shalt not touch the Lord's anointed when people are questioning them about their prophecies that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And they're putting it back and saying, well, it's because the church didn't pray hard enough or the devil stole Mm -hmm. it or, or something like that. Yeah. So that yeah. for me, I feel kind of like I, I struggle with that because I'm like, well, that is that a cop out or, or what's the deal? Are they blaming other people? Should they take responsibility? I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's not, you know, it's not an easy subject. And I, but I tell you what, come back when this whole election thing is over, you know, come back yeah. in February and, and then we can talk about it because, um, it's not over. Yeah. And even right. though the, I don't, and even though the media may have said that it's over, even though, but oh my goodness, when I hear about all of the fraud that's gone on, um, then it becomes a totally, it, it's going to end in the courts. I think somebody was saying that somebody prophesied many, many years ago that it was that this election would end in the courts. And I think that's exactly where it's going to end up in the courts. Yeah. And I'm not sure how that plays out legally, how it works, but, um, yeah, I don't either. All all I know is I said, I I was talking to some other missionaries and I just said, you know, um, I, for me, I hope that this turns around and that Trump does come through as president because for the sake of the church, for the sake of, of, because otherwise there's going to be a lot of doubt. There's going to be a lot of confusion. There's, and, and, I, I just hope that that's the way this goes. It'll be disastrous. It will be. All right. <laughs> well, so let's, let's, be. Let, let's okay. change the subject a little bit. Okay. So tell me what, what's going on with you now. Cause you were, you were going to go over. I can't, were you going, you were going to Cambodia. Right? I'm going Cambodia. to Cambodia, Cambodia. Yeah. So what, what happened? It feels like you've been in the planning for that for a long time. Well, I have, but we had this thing called the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's, Panama only opened up its airport two weeks ago. And um, Cambodia came up with a thing, if you're, a, if you're an American and a few other nationalities, if you want to come in, you have to pay $3,000 down payment for COVID. So we're waiting and all of that plays out. I mean, I, I need to get my finances squared away because you know when you as you know when you're missionary they don't pay you you pay for your own way so i'm trying to figure out what to do here in my house and how to get to cambodia and all of that but i'm going next year i'm i'm thinking maybe spring if if everything dies down you know god willing and the creek don't rise um i think i'll be going then how how long will you be there and what are you going to be doing for a year and um, we've talked about it to teach. Um, but, well, first of all, let's say that it's called Mission Extreme. And they work with the women and children who've come out of the sex slave trade. That's OM, so, right? Operation Mobilization? No. Oh, no. Oh, no, actually, Patricia King founded it about maybe 15 years ago. Oh. And then she handed it over to Andrea, who's been running it for years. And now it's Andrea's. Um, certainly with Patricia King's support and stuff, but um, yeah, so they've been working with the, and now they've been there so long, 
that now they're working with the government and you know, when they find these people, they send them over to them. They've got two schools. One school is for um, the very severely traumatized and handicapped, because unfortunately in the sex slave trade, they do terrible things to the handicapped. They don't really think that they're real. Mm. And then they have the other school, which is for the less traumatized. But since they've been there, they even had the mayor or somebody stand or the, I don't know who it was, mayor or president or whatever, um, actually had a Down syndrome child on the platform with him. And they were saying, you know, that handicapped children are people too. So they've made great headway. So in talking with Andrea, I think I would be teaching, um, running hospitality and kind of coordinating that. Mind you, with, with this COVID thing, there's not much hospitality to do. I would like to think it'll all come back. And then also to gather an international intercessory team for them. Yeah, because you do, so, you, you head up a lot of inter, intercession as well. Like you, you're one of Patricia King's intercessors and mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's kind of your ministry. How, uh, now obviously for you, it's, it's, intercession is, is such a powerful thing. And I've known you for over a decade now mm -hmm. and you are a woman of prayer constantly and prayer constantly seeking God. And so uh, intercession also for a lot of people, it's, it's almost like the, what do they call it? Like the redheaded stepchild of ministry. Like a, a lot of people look <laughs> down on it, you know? So yeah. what, what would you say to somebody? Cause for yourself, you're kind of a unique intercessor because the Lord called you to the ministry of intercession, but you didn't just stay in California or, or wherever and just pray. Like you went to Panama and start interceding. Yeah. And now, you're, now you're going to Cambodia to do it. So what, what do you say to somebody who, who feels a call to that, but it's not this glamorous thing where it's easy to raise funds for and all of that. How, how would you encourage somebody who feel, felt a call to do what you're doing? Well, for me, I have to. I mean, it's a little bit like you're either called to a prophet to be the, in the office of the prophet or you operate in the prophetic. We are all called to operate in the prophetic. We're all called to hear from God and speak into people's lives, even though we don't have the office of. I think intercession is, is kind of the same way. I, God has placed the gift of intercession in me. Which is, which is almost more of a role so that I can't help it. I have to, I, I can't not pray. Whereas I think often people, you know, they pray, but I just get into long conversations and, and I get, um, you know, words, words of scripture and declaring and, and I just, I get in it and I love it. It's where I live. I, I love it. So how uh, now? Now you and I, you and I have talked about this a lot. But for uh -huh. for listeners, for for people who watch this show, you said that you have conversations, conversations with God. How mm -hmm. how how do you have conversations with God? How do you, how do you hear Him talking back to you? What does He say to you? Okay, so like I wake up in the morning and I just go, Lord, I love you so much, and we just talk, and I I, I talk, right, and then I read Scripture, and. And I'll, I'll read a verse until something stops me. You know, like if you're reading scripture and then you go, oh, I haven't seen that before. Or it just, it, it just speaks louder than the other verses. And the, sorry, that's my roommate running the blender to hear it. Okay. <laughs> I just a little bit. Yeah, I heard, Dr. I hear blender, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, sorry. So, um, this is a real interview. So, <laughs> uh, so then I'll, if it jumps out, I mean, I can't think of a single example, but anyway, when it kind of speaks to me, I'll stop and I could just kind of sit with it and I'll, and I'll talk to and I'll just I'll talk to the Lord. And I, then I go, now, Holy Spirit, what did you mean by this? Or how does this work in my life? And then I'm quiet. Now, something I do more when I'm really listening is I journal. I have, a, I have a word processor that runs on batteries and I keep it by my bed. And I will just sit, you know, and I'll, and I'll type out, Lord, I've just read this scripture and, and 
and I need your word on it. I don't understand this. Or what do you want to say to me? And, or, and, and then I'll just wait and I'll just start to, they're my thoughts. You know, we hear God in our own thoughts. It isn't a booming Charlton Heston voice. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just conversation back, but I'll write it. When I hear it, I'll write it. And I find that, that when I'm really trying to get clarity, if I write, I get more clarity because I'm very sanguine and my mind can go here and here and here. And sometimes it's hard to grasp and bring it down. And so, so when I'm really having a serious conversation, I want to remember with the Lord, I, cause I talk to him all day, but you know, I will sit and I'll type it out as I hear it. And then I'll think of, and then I'll answer him. I'm answering in my head, but I'll type it. And so I have years of, of journaling where I can go back and I can see what the Lord said and what he told me to do. And then I'll often go, Oh Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't do it, you know, because that's the way life is. Um, but that's how I hear from God. I mean, that's how I, I record it and make it concrete in my life. And then there was a season where I used to pray for businesses and I've been thinking about going back to this. I had a great big whiteboard on my wall in my office. And I would, um, I'd, I'd start praying in tongues first, always pray in tongues first. And then I go, okay, what, what do you want to say about this business? What do I need to know? And I would start drawing pictures, you know, stick figures. And, and I'd, I'd see something, I'd see a pot with a plant growing in it. And then I'd see something else. And, and I write it all out on the board. And then when I feel like I'm done, I would sit on the sofa across from my whiteboard and go, okay, what are you saying? And it would all come together. It would be a complete um, agenda that I needed to pray into for the business. And that yeah, is a that, really, that's a really fun way to pray. And it's, it's so scriptural too, because there, there are so many times in, like I, I often think of Peter, whenever he was praying on the rooftop and he sees this vision, right? Of the sheet that came down with all the unclean things, the God spoke to him, but it says mm -hmm. that afterwards, after the vision left, that he sat there pondering the meaning of the vision. And mm -hmm. I think that's a mistake. A lot of people make is they think that God is going to speak to them and they're immediately going to know everything it means. But actually most of the time, he gives you something and you have to put it on that whiteboard or write it down and you have to really meditate on it. And then it kind of hits you one day. It just, it, it, the way it works is it's, it's amazing. I, I love how God, God has designed prayer to be a seeking out, uh, uh, just digging for that treasure in the field. And when you find it, oh, it's yeah. amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the, what, what is it? The, oh, I've lost the scripture. It's the something of the Lord to hide a thing in the, is it the glory of kings? To, the glory of kings to search it out. Glory of kings to search it out. I can't remember whether. Yeah, it's like that. He he likes you to go deep. He really does. That's right. And now, why why do you always start out with tongues? What's the how how important is that and why? Well, you know it's interesting. I've talked to people a lot about this. Um, when I was I, I grew up in the church, but I never knew about salvation, and so the day that somebody told me that I could be saved and I had also heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how that was like the power to live out your life. I got saved. I got spirit filled. I got, I spoke in tongues all at the same time and it blasted me. I've never, I've been a radical Jesus lover ever since. And I've never turned back. I, you know, people say you've had, I don't think I've had, I don't think I've backslidden a day in my life. You know, I've been, walking with the Lord for over 45 years. It's just always been a forward walk. And, um, and then my husband, he got saved. Then I prayed for him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit four months later. And he said I, he felt closer to the Lord and something deeper, but he didn't speak in tongues. A year later, I was brushing my teeth and he was in the other room and the Lord said, if you pray for Tony right now, he'll receive his language. And I did, and he did. And he said it was another experience. So the salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit, we're saved. 
in the baptism of the Holy Spirit that, of course, everybody who doesn't know, go read Acts 2 and just ask for it. That's, I, I can't tell you how many people I've sat on my sofa and said, read Acts 2 out loud. Okay, ask Holy Spirit for it. Okay, speak in another language. And it's just like that. But, so let, let me let, let's let's land on this for a minute because I actually okay. just had a couple of weeks ago I had a conversation with some close friends of mine and they they have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit and they've been struggling with this of because pe- that people speak like you do and they say oh well read Acts two and then just start just start doing it so mm-hmm. it, but if somebody has no like grid or context for that. How does somebody just start doing it? Do they just open their mouth and start making sounds? Or how how does someone begin to speak in tongues? Patricia King gave the best explanation I ever heard. I think oftentimes people, okay, first of all, I want to say don't be condemned. Don't feel condemned if you don't speak in tongues. Because I think oftentimes people are very bombastic about it. And then people try try to get you know it's like it's them they're trying to do it and then they don't receive it and then they feel less than and leave all that behind and just see it as a gift from the lord but in in acts 2 in in the book of acts um it said that they all came together and there was a rushing mighty wind and they they spoke in another language and when you want to do that, when you ask the Holy Spirit to come in and fill you and, and give you that experience, then you need to use your vocal cords and you need to use your tongue and your lips. Because, and, and it's not like a baby bird, just, you know, you, you need to use your body to make sounds. And I think sometimes people don't realize they have to use their vocal cords and you have to use your tongue and let it go. Shalamahi, alakaya, wherever it goes. Um, but it's, it's a powerful, powerful thing to have. It, it, I think it gives you the power to witness. It gives you the power to, to live your life in a much greater way <clears throat> than basic salvation, which there's nothing greater than salvation. But it's like, with cream on the top. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I I remember uh, speaking in tongues. I was I was a kid. And I was actually playing playing baseball when and I had been asking the Lord to let me speak in tongues to give me the gift of tongues for a long time. And I was out. I was not a very good baseball player, and so they had me way out in outfield. And it just I, I did that. Like I just sort of opened my mouth and just said, "All right, I'm just going to try this" because nobody was around. <laughs> And started speaking, and I've I've been speaking in tongues ever since, and it is it is so powerful. It really does change things. It's, it's amazing. It does change things. So let let me ask you about. I, I want to ask you about your other book, the one that you just wrote. It just recently came out. Can you uh, tell us um, tell us about your newest book? What that's about? Where it came from? Okay. Okay. Well, so I moved to Panama twelve and a half years ago with my husband. And he died four and a half years ago. We've been married 45 years and we're extremely close and had a great marriage and no children. And um, so during, during this time period, I ended up writing a book. And so this is, this is my new book. Called, you wrote it since, since he died in the past four years. I wrote, yeah, this came out just at the beginning of the pandemic actually. But it's finding your kingdom identity as a widow, discovering the heavenly bride within. And did you design that cover? I love that cover. No, I got it from Fiverr. Oh, really? Fiverr is great. I know. I love Fiverr. She's $40 and her name is, oh, shoot. It starts with an A. Anyway, she's really good. Um, So what was I going to say? Oh, so... Yeah, I just felt compelled to write this book for other widows. And it truly is. I mean, if you're not a Christian, you might have a very hard time with it because it's a it's a a very Christian out there book. But I basically talked about it and I and I have about, I don't know, maybe eight or ten different people, <clears throat> excuse me, who wrote their experiences of what it was like to be a widow. So you get not only my experience, but also other people's experiences as well. And my last chapter, the Lord told me, 
the Lord told me, <laughs> um, that I was not to finish the book until I took Brian Simmons' course on the Song of Songs and the mm. Song of Solomon. And so the last chapter of the book is the Song of Solomon <laughs> and how we are the bride and how much Jesus loves us. And honestly, the last chapter on the Song of Songs to me is my favorite chapter in the book. But it just it's just an encouragement to keep going. And, and now it's been four and a half years and I am now ready to start my life without him. I'm mm. 73. So, you know, it, widowhood, when you've been gone, you know, I mean, when you've been so close for so many years, everything you do is in partnership. You know, at, you have somebody to talk to, you have somebody to bounce things off of. And suddenly, even though I did a lot of the things in our house, because Tony had had a stroke halfway through our marriage, but, you know, I did the finances and all that. But still, when there's, when it's just you, it's a, it's a scary place to be. And I have just totally relied on the Lord 100%. And that is what makes it so possible. I don't know how people can live through it if they don't have God. Yeah, I, I was talking to somebody. I, actually, first, before I go into that, I just want to tell people, uh, Brian Simmons is the lead translator for the Passion Translation Bible. And he was uh, there. I have an interview with him uh, about, I, I think, about 10 episodes ago now. So if you haven't heard from Brian Simmons, go watch that interview and get it's the a Passion great Translation. Interview. Yeah, great interview. I and I will, I'll put the link to the Song of Solomon as well in the description here, his study on that. If, if I can, I don't know if it's something you get individually, but, uh, yeah. I, but anyway. When I, I took it, it was, yeah, I had to buy it. It was like $99. Okay. So well, I'll, if I can, I'll, I'll put a link in for it. But um, what I was going to say is I was just talking to somebody about this again, uh, I think yesterday, because my wife and I, we've been married. We're coming up, I think on 14 years. And I was saying, you better know. <laughs> yeah, I can never remember. I can't remember if it's 14 or 15, but we're yeah. coming up on one on an anniversary. And I was uh -huh. saying, you know, we've only for us, I felt like when we hit 10 years was whenever we started to really gel as a couple. And mm -hmm. I, I was telling them because the, I was talking to somebody who had also they've been married over 40 years. And I said, I can't imagine what it must be like, how close you must be after so long after being married for 40 years, it's got to be I mean, at that point, you're just one person. You are. You are one. As a matter of fact, after, after he died, I looked inside me, you know, obviously spiritually or with my mind, and I saw like a big root ball and half of them were his and half of them were mine. And that's how you are. I mean, you're just like this when you're married. And, and I remember looking at it and saying, Lord, you're going to have to do this. And, you know, root by root by root by root and it finally you know but it takes it takes years i remember working for hospice and i um just filled in for the receptionist because she was in a car accident so i was there about six months and i opened every case and i closed every case and i remember learning that you would be at least that a min it would be a minimum of two years before anybody could begin to get over a family member yeah and yeah. i remember thinking two years that is so long and you know i'm a pretty strong pragmatic woman i mean i i never expected it to affect me the way i did but i just basically kind of dropped out for a while yeah yeah i, I remember whenever we, he first when tony first died because i was at the funeral and and uh just messaging oh, you up translated that was yeah. so perfect yeah you did a I, great job I, I appreciate that thank you but i i remember just messaging back and forth with you for I mean, several months after and you were just it was it was difficult so so if people who buy this book the widows in particular who who may buy this book or uh mm -hmm. i am because because you you wrote it out of a place that was not only personal but also fresh to you, it was new ground, new territory for you. Mm -hmm. I imagine that there's it's got to be so powerful for for people who are going through widowhood right now. And I may even title this uh, podcast. I may put even something in there about widowhood in there, just so people who are going through it will see the title and will listen and be able to to get this book because I know how encouraging. It, it is. Yeah, it's been very encouraging to many people. It's interesting. I went back and read the comments on Amazon the other day. And one person um, 
one person had a problem with it and it was an interesting thing she said she said um i had written it from the perspective of being healed <coughs> and i have read several widow books and they're all very melancholy you know in your deep feeling and and i have some of that because i save some of my emails because you can't go back and and recreate that kind of pain unless you just picked it up in an email when you wrote it you know yeah but she was saying that it was difficult for her because she was still in her severe pain but um i had she felt like maybe she was less than because she you know was still feeling her deep pain and that was an interesting comment that she said because it's probably true um but then I have other friends who were very freshly widowed and they all said, oh, thank you so much. Because I talk about things that actually I have a couple of men who've read it as well. And they said, this is really, this is good for widows too, because there's a whole list in it. Have you read it? You oh yeah. I, I was one of your first buyers. Oh, good. Did you comment on it? Yes. I, <laughs> I, I think I might've been the first person to comment on Amazon. Oh. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. I can't remember. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. So it, but it talks about, um, like there's a list of what you need for other people to read. Like, you know, if, if I'm a widow and my husband's gone and you can fix the plumbing, would you please call me? You know, that kind of thing, you uh -huh. know, or if you're good in finances, you know, it, it would be very helpful for somebody you know, for a widow who her husband has been taking care of the finances all the mm. time. You know, they're just things that, that as a widow, you're used to sharing all of this stuff. You know, I'm used, I had to learn how to change gas tanks and, you know, light the gas water heater because <laughs> that was Tony's job. You know, yeah. So, yeah, there are a lot of, there's, there's a lot of things that go on with widowhood, but yeah. That's, that's so powerful. So for now, because uh, you, you're in Panama, and I'm, I'm just curious, between now and you going to Cambodia, what are you, are you just going to be there in Panama? Are you coming back to the States? Are you going to come visit me at all? I would love to. I'm so cold. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, Thursday, I'm going to Missouri. And I'm going, you know, I'm going to a seminar. And then I'm going to go visit and then I'm going to basically come home because I have a friend here and I'm, I just, I have friends here who are alone for Christmas and I can't, I, I'm coming back. Yeah, so I'm going I, to come back. We'll have a Christmas day and bring all the people who are singles, you know, in uh, for Christmas day. And then I, um, I don't know, the faster I get money um, and support, the faster I go to Cambodia. Yeah, this so, is something like we, said, we, we've been messaging about on WhatsApp because so many missionaries and pastors uh, across the board, you know, church attendance is down so much. That we're all financially in a, yeah. a, a tough spot. And so a lot of missionaries and, and pastors are starting businesses or getting some kind of online job. And absolutely. I am not asking for support. I mean, really, I'm... I would be asking for prayer, but I have, as you know, I have become um, a copywriter and it's a job that I can do anywhere in the world and, uh, and support myself because yeah, I, I think that we need to, you know, some of us are called to be supported and some of us I think are called to just do it. I mean, I have social security, which isn't really enough, but, but with, a new career i can go where god wants me to go and do what he wants me to do and if anybody sends me money i can give it to whoever needs it so that's right that's yeah that's sort of always been my that's always been my goal especially since i started found ministries has always been to get to the point where i don't need people's support at all for my own personal living which i'm i'm getting pretty close now but i mm -hmm. want to be able to give absolutely everything everything oh, over to, to, uh, to just straight projects and everything. Yeah. 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 Me too. Okay. Well, um, Amanda, I really appreciate your time taking the time to come do this oh, interview. It's so good to see you. Yeah, I know. I feel like it's been so it. long. We're, we're planning God willing, if everything works out, we're planning on coming down to Panama, hopefully before you go to Cambodia, we're planning on coming early next year and, uh, 
So hopefully, hopefully we'll see, or uh, maybe I'll, I'll see you in Cambodia because I'm going to be over in that area later on in the year. So uh, hopefully, I don't know if I'll oh, go to, I don't know I'm if I'll go to Cambodia. Phnom, I'm going to be in Phnom Penh. Okay. <laughs> Which is a huge city. And yesterday I was in David and it was hot and the traffic in David, you won't believe it when you get back, it's horrible. And I was in the traffic and it was hot. My air conditioner didn't work. And I was, and I said, why am I going to Phnom Penh? <laughs> <laughs> only God, only God will have to make it right. Oh, you're going to love it. It's going to be a whole new experience. And the yeah, food is I so, because I, I haven't been to Cambodia, but I've been to Thailand several times. <laughs> and I know the food is very similar. <laughs> And oh, the food is so good there. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, Amanda, could you pray for our listeners? Oh, uh, first of all, is there, I actually have never asked you this, so you may even say no. Do you have a website or anything where people can go check you out or just your Facebook? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. I'm about, to, I'm about to get a copywriter website, but yeah, just okay. Facebook. I do, okay. but I, I haven't, I mean, no, no, I don't have a website. Okay. I should. Okay. Well, uh, can you just pray for our listeners and bless them as we, we uh, end this interview here? You bet. You bet. Father, we love you so much. There is, there is no one like you. Father, I lift up all the, the listeners. Well, first I want to pray for Alan. Father, I thank you for Alan and Carmi and his whole family, Lord. I, I love the heart that you've, that you've given him, Lord, the passion for you, the he is surely a, a young man on fire for you with revival in his heart. And I thank you for blessing him and providing everything that he needs in his life. And Father, I pray for all the listeners today that they would find peace, especially those that are in America, Lord, that, that they would find peace in you and amidst all the turmoil and all the news and everything that's going on. Father, I pray that peace that would pass all understanding to to live within them, Father. And Father, thank you for turning their hearts and their eyes to you and, and not to man. And Father, for those all around the world, Father, I pray that you would place a spirit of intercession and prayer in all of us, Lord, that, that we would find the utter delight of coming before you and sitting before you and being quiet and just listening and hearing your voice and speaking with you father we thank you that you give us directions in our lives and you don't leave us you don't leave us alone at all you never forsake us father ever 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 and so father i speak blessings and favor over everyone listening i speak your mercy and your grace father i thank you that we are all the head and not the tail we're the lenders not the borrowers we're above and not beneath father i thank you that no weapon formed against us can prosper we can we can walk through this life, Lord, strong with our eyes on you, filled with, filled with your Holy Spirit, filled with your love, filled with your passion. Father, I thank you that you keep our minds um, just set on you. We thank you that we have the mind of Christ. And we thank you, Father, for pouring your love in us and through us so that we can love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm sure we'll, we'll of course, continue chatting and, and sending messages through WhatsApp and everything, but I'm sure everyone's yeah. going to be so blessed by this. Oh, it was fun to see you. Thank you. Right. Love All to right. everybody Bye. listening. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.